I, I look for my sources. I look as far back as I can. And not many people can afford to do that because I'm, I'm one of the rare people who have dedicated their life to that. So this is a very nasty book. Very nasty book. My name is James Surgeon. I'm a scholar, a writer, a historian. I specialized at the university in the physical embodiment of evil in Gothic literature. And for the past 30 years, I've developed and began being specialized in the physical embodiment of evil throughout history. So what is this? Anti-vampire kit dated 19th century, which I believe to be authentic because it's coherent. There's the mirror, and it's Bram Stoker who proposed the theory according to which a vampire has no reflection in the mirror. So that means the box would have had to have been made after the publication of Dracula in 1897. The prayer book that goes with it, which is in French, which would make it the only anti-vampire kit made in France, was published in 1897, the year of the publication of Dracula. So somebody read Dracula and made the box afterwards, but added objects which are not in the book. This is an old Roman funeral uh, Ritual consists in when somebody dies, you have to oh, at sunset see. ring the bell for one hour in every home. So, because vampires don't like noise, they don't like mercury either, which is a little known fact. So, this was made by somebody serious. Smallest syringes in the world, 1850, to inject the holy water. The water would be. Um, oh, you'd find that in the church. You just take it from the font. Yeah. And you've got, a, you've got a mallet there to drive the stake through the heart. Yes. Stakes were made of iron, not of wood, generally. Oh. Because wood doesn't last very long. It's just such a fantastic collection of stuff. Everything, everything vampire. I've got everything here from literature to historical, legend, myth, artifacts, objects. Everything, everything vampire. The first mention of the vampire is in the Psalms of David in the Bible. The worst enemies of Israel have long teeth. They have swords on their teeth. I heard that people drank the water of the Thames still under Jack the Ripper time in uh, Victorian England. There was no sewer system and no tap water in uh, in, the, in the Whitechapel in France. They sold uh, the water of the Seine all through the Middle Ages and people died or they got fairly sick. So Drinking uh, blood does make you live a little longer because you'll live less if you drink water. So the legend of the vampire is true somewhere. That's the basis of all legends. And I have a text from Comines, which is an extraordinary historian of the Middle Ages, who says uh, when you wanted to explain that two, for example, people hated each other's guts, it, it was a normal thing to say that yeah, those two won't bite each other. We'll never bite each other. Wow. Mm. So... Uh, Vampires are not negative because biting you is not a sign, it's a sign of giving you something. Because when they take your blood, they give you life. So how did you how did you find this? Well, I learned in a weird way. I was going to a lecture in Provence at the University of Lille to announce the opening of a museum, which no one knew about. It was a scoop. And I went to take, before going to take the train to Gard Gardino, I entered a cafe where I never set foot before. A guy came up to me and told me Dracula was buried in the Père Lachaise. Said he was not interested in vampires, but he was part of a statical cult and knew that Dratepeche, whose body had never been found, was buried in hiding in the Père Lachaise. And he gave me one clue. It took me three weeks to find it. And I found a tomb in which there was the cat and other, other proof of vampire rituals. Romania is the country, so-called country of vampires, because that's where you had most people killed starting the 8th century to the 18th century, where Turkey wanted to invite invade, sorry, <laughs> to lapsus uh, Europe, and they started through Romania, because if you have two Europes together, East and Western, with the Danube, you can bring your troops in, and it's in the middle of Europe. So uh, they were martyrized for centuries and centuries, and so many dead people. And who says dead people? Imagine you have a, a battlefield, 2 o'clock in the morning, it's dark, 
You have 50,000 corpses lying here. What, what do you do with the bodies? Caution. Would, would advise you to burn them. But you can't. Starting in the 8th century, forbidden to burn in Catholic religion. Why? Because the body has to reunite with the soul at, at your death. But in total darkness, well, how do you check that somebody's dead? You kick him. If he doesn't move, you'll bury him. And very often the person has only fainted or too weak to react, to have a reaction. So, but you say if you bury him alive, he's going to die of suffocation after a few seconds. No. You dig big trenches, say a few meters deep and 30, 40 meters long, and then you fill them up with corpses. And after a few hours, you have people who are covered with corpses who will start screaming because they're only fainted. And I can guarantee you, let's say you have 10,000 corpses who start screaming at the same time. You're going to be freaked out. You're going to say, hey, that guy's only wounded. You're going to say he's a living dead. Uh, you don't take blood from a corpse because it coagulates. So the message is clear. Vampires don't kill to feed themselves. When other people kill, to feed themselves. And they make you what they are. And they leave you the choice. They make you as they are. There's no sexism. There's no hierarchy in vampires. There's no Mr. Number One. It's primitive, it's, I mean, but it's sort of nice. It's only people, the people who come and propose to you to become a vampire will be people of your family, your close circle of friends. So starting the 17th century, when they stopped burning witches, they had the Jews, they had the women, the witches, they had to find another scapegoat, the living dead. So then the church started unburying corpses in cemeteries to convince people that vampires are not romantic, they're not nice, they're foul-smelling. And it coincides with the, the end of, of uh, witch trials. Everybody has always wanted the same thing for the past 40 centuries. Everybody wants a house. Everybody wants a home. Everybody wants work. Everybody wants to eat every day. Everybody wants love. Everybody wants friendship. Everybody wants respect. And everybody wants to go out and have fun on Saturday evening. What changes the people who do not want you to have that type of happiness. Being nice has always existed, being nasty too. We can see that things are starting all over again. There are some people in the world who do not want us to be happy. They created these these, these bombings. Why? Because there's, hey, it was wine, woman, and song, eh? It's not a coincidence. And throughout history, it's always been the same thing. Things haven't changed when people are stubborn or fanatics. They don't want other people to be happy. And forms of happiness are always the same. And being a vampire embodies all that. Goes out at night, which is a symbol of freedom generally, and he has fun with the people he loves, basically. And I really believe in that basis. <laughs> so a lot of people, I mean, people who are interested in vampires or who do not like certain aspects of vampires, like to say that regularly Poland, Italy, Bulgaria, Ireland. Bodies have been found in cemeteries, either with stones thrust down their throat or with stakes through the heart, or beheaded with the head between the legs, or the limbs tied, so they wouldn't come back. So that proves that people hated vampires. But no, because there were very few of them found, generally it's two or three per country. One was found in Italy last year, a few in Poland, some in Bulgaria, three in Ireland, a few years back. But that, once again, there's the sociological aspect, translates, the f not the fear, but the bad conscience of the living. What is logical is the living dead exist, let's say, if they come back, why would they come back? They should come back, like any person who's traveled long, who comes back, who was poor, who's become rich, either to reward the one he loves, to find the one he loves, or to get revenge upon those who hurt him, who have wronged him. So if you drive a stake through the heart of someone of your family who just died, that you don't want him, you're afraid the person is going to come back. Why? Because you know you've wronged him, you know he's going to get revenge. It's the mirror of your bad conscience, not the mirror of the vampire. The vampire doesn't need reflection because he's only reflecting you. Because if you love that person, why should you drive a stake through the heart? Why should you be unhappy that this person could come back? That's what's interesting in legends. They reflect so many real things and important things. And most anthropologists will tell you that you can judge a people by their relation with the living dead, with the other world, and the other world is peopled with living dead. So you can say, you judge the people by their relation with vampires. I'm not evil, the evil is in you. That's why when you look at a vampire in a mirror, you only see yourself.